Okay, tires. Today we're going to be tying a sulfur. And the one that we're going to tie today involves an underbody of Viva 16 Ot fluorescent orange tying thread. And as you can see, I hold the thread up towards me. And what this does is it, it lays each wrap perfectly behind each other. There you trim off. And you don't have to be too fussy with this because all it is is an underbody. So what I will do is I will go back up and thicken it up a little bit so it does have a tendency to shine through a little bit more from the dubbing. All right, the next point is your tailing material. Uh, tailing is done with, for me, is done with a paintbrush. And most guys use microfibits. A fly this size would require two on each side. It takes too much time. They don't look right. You use one on each side with this and you're in business. Plus, it's a lot cheaper. All right, this is a synthetic brush, but you can actually get sable, too. Uh, that, that requires a lot more money. These synthetics are perfect. They're thin and pointy and flexible. All right, so here's your tails. You got your two paintbrush fibers, and I'm evening them up. You lay them on a shank of the hook, top of the shank, and you give it two or three wraps to check out the, the length, and you want it to be about the same size as the length of the shank of the hook. And that's still a little bit too long. Pull a few more in like such, and we're in business. All right, so now you secure that. You trim off your excess in the back. And the way we want to separate these is pretty easy. Uh, most people, they used to put like a bump in there and put one on each side. That also takes too long. So what I found over the years is you take both of them and you pull them vigorously towards yourself. And you'll see that one stays there and one wants to go back towards the actual tie-in spot. You grab that back one and you pull it away from you. And you make a wrap down, separate it, hold one, and then you drop your thread through and one around, and that secures that one, and that should be enough, but I always give it another one. I'll go around one more time, and then take this one, and go underneath it like such, and then up, and then this one around too. So now you got two tails that can't go anywhere, so they'll stay apart. The reason why we use those is because it, it uh, acts as a rudder, and it stabilizes the fly perfectly, so it, it won't tip one way or the other, and it also represents the fly, uh, the uh, tails, which you want. Next step is your dubbing, and I use a mixture of dubbing. I use super fine, and it, it is the Cahill yellow, all right? And then the next one to be blended with is super fine, and that would be your sulfur orange. The mixture is two parts of the Cahill yellow to one part of the sulfur orange, and you come up with a blend that looks like this. It's got like a nice little orange hue into it, and it will be really magnified when the fly gets wet uh, with the underbody of your fluorescent orange thread shining through. Gives it a real sulfur effect. Um, putting on dubbing, you guys all know, Thin is better. You get a nice tight little noodle when you do it that way. And it fly stays nice and tight, won't come undone. And you can see how thin that is. And then you make your wraps. All right. And I always take my two tails and I'll make one wrap underneath them. And that sets them up in the air a little bit. And now I just complete the fly, the wrap. You go halfway to the center, and this is where your wing is going to go. And, of course, for your wing, I like uh, poly material, white, for the sulfur. And you pull out a couple of strands, and it looks like such. And you just place those on the top of the shank of the hook, like this. Tie them in nice and secure. And then take your scissors and lay it flat on the top of the hook and trim. And you'll see that you get a nice little clump that you easily can hide with your thread. 
Now you go back to your tie-in spot, which is here, and you make a couple of wraps down, and then you take your hand and you lift up and you bring your thread around the actual post, and that keeps it straight right up, and you can't you can't beat it; it won't go anywhere. Else. And then you lock it in a couple of locks like this. Now the next thing is we you want to cover some of your wraps. So I put a, just a touch of your body material, your dubbing, on, and that's going to cover the spots where you wrap in your hackle. And it'll go like this. Your hackle is whiting, and it's the 100 packs. And I love them because you, you get like two or three sizes, but I get... It's not a hundred for me. I get a couple hundred flies out of each one of them. I'm getting my hackle ready. I'm clean it up a little bit for the tie-in. Lay it flat on the shank of the hook. And you sock it in. And as you're socking it in, you're covering up your threads and you're building your body for your final tie-off. And now your body is complete. And you just wrap your hackle like you would on any parachute. The only difference is going to be how I finish it off, and I'll show you once we get to that point. Uh, um, guys that have tied for a, a while that have used hackles know that some hackles are better than others. Some of them, the barbules aren't close enough to call themselves neighbors, so you got to make quite a few wraps. This one here is fairly decent, so I don't have to make that many wraps. What I do once I get to this spot is I turn my hand and I bring the tying thread up and over and then I lay it flat on the shank of the hook. Now that is caught. It's not going to go anywhere. You drop this and you pull your hackles back like such and you give it two wraps. That secures your hackles in place and now you want to trim off your excess and you just pinch it and you, again you lay your scissors and you clean off nice. Now you see you got a nice round hackle in there. Now whip finishing is where everybody starts falling apart. And the reason is is that they have a tendency to want to take your whip finisher and go this way over and above. I want you to go this way sideways and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay so you get your thread and you lay it flat right over the back of the eye like such and give yourself some room and you pull your hackle and your wing back and you just give it a few wraps like such and you see that you got didn't catch very many hackles whatsoever barbules I should say and you pull this back and you'll see that you get a couple here and there that are stragglers. Not many, though. And now you can see you got it perfect. The next part is to finish off the fly, which is to trim the wing to make it look similar to a wing. And you do this by holding it upside down because that way you could see the length of the shank or the hook. And that's approximately how long you want to make your wing. And you come in and you cut it in on an angle like such and then a down angle like such, and you should have a pretty nice wing. And there you go. There's a sulfur pattern.